Hi everyone, welcome back to The Source. My name is Tatiana Gisharo and today I'm joined with the lovely Nadia Favri. I just want to change that adjective to delicious, maybe <laughs> scrumptious, okay. mouth-watering. Okay, I like scrumptious. Any. Okay, I'll take So it. I'll do that again. I'm here with the scrumptious <laughs> <laughs> Nadia <laughs> Faisley. How thank are you, you feeling today? I feel wonderful. It's raining and I'm wearing a dark lipstick and I'm sitting next to somebody awesome. What more oh. can I ask for? <laughs> I appreciate that. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So in January, uh -huh. uh, we know that you marked 10 years of your career in radio. So if you could please just walk us through that journey, um, highlighting some of your major achievements and just, yeah, starting from 10 years ago till date. When you say 10 years, first of all, I feel archaic. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a fossil. Um, 10 years ago, I saw a poster that said presenters wanted. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna go act like an absolute fool. And uh, I did. And then they decided that's what they wanted. And I was like, okay. Uh, I started off as an intern slash trainee. And then within like a month or so, I got six shows oh, a week. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been 10 years since then. I, I was at XFM, which I'm sure we'll dive into because there's still a, a cult following there. Um, despite me trying to shake it off. Uh, yeah, so it, it kind of just, snowballed um, from there and I did five years at X and then two years of the podcast and starting other like little journeys and then I've been at Capital for about two and a half years now. Oh wow. I kind of started and then I blinked and then we're here. Oh wow. It's kind of just yeah, how it goes. Yeah time really goes by quite fast. Absolutely. Which actually brings me to my next question because mm -hmm. you said you just went there and you pulled around and it yeah. became your life. So. What, at what moment did you realize that radio is what you wanted to do? Oh, what made you realize that? That's a big question. I, in school, I, I, I was studious, but I was just, my heart wasn't in it at all. And uh, I think when I saw that, that poster, I was like, oh, maybe this is a potentially something that could light a fire in me, but I was like, slim chance. Um, so I think... When I sat in, the, we had like a like a mock uh, show that we had to put together, and the moment I turned on that microphone, I was like, I always say this, but it felt like I was coming home to myself, oh, wow. and I I did not think in my life that I would feel like that about anything, not a lover, not a this or not a that, but like for some reason, radio seems to be the woman of my dreams. Oh, I love to hear yeah. that. That's a really beautiful way to put it. What is it that makes your work rewarding to you? What is it that at the end of the day, Ooh. this is why I'm here? I think it's it's twofold. One is um, if I run into somebody or somebody DMs me and they're like, hey, I was having a bad day, but then you said this and it made me giggle and it made me feel better. That is the obvious yeah. answer that everybody gives, but it really does make you feel so joyful that you're like a little part of somebody's day, even from afar. Uh, but secondly, on a very selfish reason, and in that I had like a gap year or two between stations and I wouldn't have survived longer. I would wake up every morning being like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Something is missing. I wonder what it is. You know when you watch like a, a certain movies and the protagonist is really going through it, any kind of like surface they see, they look and they go, who am I? Yeah. That was me. <laughs> any puddle, I look into somebody's eyes, it would be my reflection. I'd be like, who am I? And then uh, obviously like uh, I got called into Capital and again, I had that re-epiphany the moment the microphone turned on. I was like, <gasps> okay. Oh. That's what was missing. Makes you feel alive. It makes alive. you feel alive and needed. And oh. like, uh, if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, like everybody has their part to play in this, in whatever it is that we're doing, I feel very much that this is mine and I want to stick to it. Again, very well said. Thank you. So you talked about switching between stations. Yeah. Uh, we know that you had immense success at XFM. Yes. So how was um, the transition from XFM to Capital? You mentioned something about a cult following. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we want all the tea. <laughs> <laughs> I think the term transition or transition puts it in the past, but I feel like I'm reliving it every day. There's something about X, RIP, um, that people really grabbed onto and were completely obsessed with and that hasn't gone away. So every day I either get a thirsty uh, DM 
which I sometimes appreciate, sometimes don't, <laughs> or I get an XFM related uh, DM where it's like, oh, we miss you on XFM, we sure on XFM. And uh, I find that wild the because it's been years. It's not, yeah, <laughs> I, I quit in 2016, 2017, mm. it's 2022, like I'm in my 30s now. Um, so I think, yeah, it is It is quite interesting to still get, uh, to, to get that kind of feedback. And it's still sweet. I love to kind of push back and be like, leave me alone. <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's very sweet. More recently, somebody wrote an article about my podcast, and it said, "Cut the foreplay," um, a podcast by former XFM presenter Nadia Favri, or the current Capital FM, you know, presenter. or just a current human that's existing. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, get okay, put salt." Yeah. So now that you actually bring up your podcast, that's great because um, that's where I was headed to. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned to me that you you began your podcast in 2016. Yes, ma'am. Um, Podcasting is something that's been going on for a while, yes, yeah. but it's only just now started to gain traction. So what can you say about hopping on that wave when you did? Ooh. Did many people know about podcasting? Did people look at you like, what on earth is a podcast? Yeah. Uh, so my train of thought was initially that I was doing that show at X and I was like, I get to tap into my personality, what, five times an hour. Uh, I got to keep my demographic in mind. I have to be limited in what I say because obviously I can't be the very dirty, dirty version of myself that yeah. I can be. And uh, so I was like, what if I had a platform where I could do all those things? And discovering yourself as a host is a very like intimate process. And I was like, what if I had that? But all the time, turning on a microphone and talking for a minute 30, depending on the show that you're on, a minute to three minutes is way different from turning on a microphone at home in your underwear and being like, who am I as a, as a persona? So I was like, that's what I want. But also there's a sense of, like I find that some media and some media outlets in Kenya treat the listeners as though they are regressive or not as smart as they are. I think Kenyans are so progressive and super intelligent and layered. And uh, I wanted to create a show that felt like me as a Kenyan and me and my friends and not a show where it's like you come home and your wife hasn't made you a sandwich do you beat her or do you not like you know that those kind of oh topics are still yeah. on the radio and it's, yeah. it's very odd to see yeah. uh, so I just wanted something that was light-hearted and sweet and over the top okay. and uh, I saw that podcasts were a thing <laughs> not here but in general and um, I was like yeah. I'm going to quit my job and that's what I'm going to do. And then, <laughs> so I did it and I managed to sell my first podcast, which was very exciting. My first episode. Um, and after that, it just... Well, congratulations for Thank that. That's you. so cool. So then what inspired the name Cut the Pop Leaf? First of all, <laughs> more recently I was talking, we did this uh, BBC training f uh, for hosts and... Um, the guy who was training us was like, oh, that's a terrible name to pick because if you type in cut the foreplay, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot oh, of no. other things that pop up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I've just uh, thought about that. Yeah, actually. there you go. <laughs> uh, and also, like, imagine reiterating that to my sweet mother who's like, what's your podcast called? Oh, I'm like, cut the, cut the foreplay. And she's like, oh, gosh. Um, I picked it because I wanted to be a no-fluff conversation, like get to the meat of it. You know what I mean? Not <laughs> stop it, young lady. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what it is. I don't want to pretend to be other people or do other things. I just want to talk about exactly what I want to talk what I want to talk about when I want to talk about it. Yeah, you know, just. Okay, that's so cool. Yeah. So, uh, from listening to your podcast, I noticed um, that you are a very sex positive person in okay. general. Um, yeah. You describe yourself many times as inappropriate. Have you 100%. always been this sex positive? Mm. Has anybody ever been really <laughs> sex positive from the jump? You know, you kind of have to stumble and find your footing. I think because I grew up uh, in a family that was half Catholic, half Muslim in Mombasa Whoa. in the 90s, where all we had was one TV station that turned off at 8 o'clock after the 7 o'clock news and then you wait until the next day. Mm. You don't have access to the internet, you don't have access to uh, understanding sex and sexuality. Mm. So I felt like I was like blindfolded for like a majority of my life and once that was dropped, I was like, there's no going back. You know <laughs> yeah. when you walk into a room yeah. and it's dark and you kind of stumble around and then somebody turns on the light? Even if there's a moment where the power cuts off, you still know where everything is. Yeah. I think that's how it, ah, it kind of... that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, there's, I can never regress into not owning 
my sexuality. Yeah. But also, like, I think more naturally, even when you walk around in life, people will hypersexualize you. And when you true. can do that for yourself and feel comfortable in that, yeah. you find that even if somebody else is doing that to you, you already have stood your ground and have your footing. Yeah, and you're less affected by yeah, it. Exactly. So I'm glad to hear that you're very sex positive and that you encourage sex positive conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel the same way. But obviously being on radio and even online, you have to have some level of censorship. Yeah. Um, I feel like you've done a really good job at being able to be bold and censored at the same time. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is how do you do that? Okay. And second, knowing that obviously you're going to slip up, I want to know if you've ever gotten in trouble for saying something you shouldn't have okay. on air. Um, Okay, twofold. First part is I got told like literally day one of my career and I feel like this completely saved me that you can get away with anything if you deliver it right. And I firmly believe that because I've seen other hosts that are sufficiently similar to me but maybe don't deliver things the same way and have gotten in trouble for saying the same things that I've said. And I'm like, it's literally just about a tapestry of words and how you put them together like a little puzzle and for me I'm like I want to be the most me I definitely can be and that sometimes includes euphemisms and being a little bit dirty and I'm, so when I'm home I'm like how can I navigate this conversation and the situation uh, and most of the time I've succeeded uh, but other times I definitely have gotten in trouble um, I can't remember one specific slip up where it was like a really bad word or a really raunchy conversation but I do remember one that wasn't that bad and I still got in trouble. I used to do a segment called uh, Oi Goi. Uh, I think it was Stupid Criminals uh, where I talk about all these criminals that did something really silly and blah 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 and I was like oh we're gonna have a, a segment of Stupid Criminals it comes about as often as a menopausal woman gets her period and then... Uh, <laughs> That's not that bad. It's though. not bad at all. These are things it's that funny. women go through. And uh, the, the program director at the time rushed into the studio, not a capital, um, but uh, rushed into the studio and was like, you cannot say menopause on the radio. And I was what? like, why? Uh, I'm like, a lot of women I know are going through menopause or about to or eventually will. What's the issue? And he's like, That's inappropriate. Blah, 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 blah. And how I like to approach these situations is like, you hired me and you knew who I was. You're gonna have to just take it. You know, yeah. like this is the personality that you wanted, this is the personality that you got, which I guess is like a terrible, you know. Uh, no, but way I to appreciate go. the integrity. Thank you. Um, so when he left the studio, I went back on air after the song and I was like, I really wanna apologize for offending anybody. Uh, with the term menopause. I definitely won't say the word menopause again because <laughs> menopause seems to be extremely, and then I just said it like, da, 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 da. and he came back in there and he just gave me the middle finger and he's like, you do whatever you want. And I was like, thank you, I probably will. So That was a really good way of handling it. Thank and another you. take home that I got from your answer of that question is that you do a lot of your work outside of the studio as yes. well, which I think is very commendable. Thank you. As we move forward, um, so now you have great experience in radio and immense success in podcasting as well. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, do you think that radio is dying and podcasting is taking its place? Yeah, where to throw that at me? <laughs> is radio dying? Um, it's hard to be objective and be like, as a listener, I feel this because I, all I do is think about radio. As you said, I prep most of the show is is outside of the show. It's like watching a play and assuming that the actors are just there knowing the lines out of nowhere. No, yeah. they're home sitting there, you know, yeah. churning through, reading their scripts. Um, so for me, my entire day, 90% of the time is like radio. 1% is like, what am I going to eat? 9% is like giggling at random things. So it's really hard to be objective in that in that way. But as a host, I can tell you it feels completely different. The relationship that I have with a listener on a podcast as opposed to a live show is completely different. Um, there was this guy who used to call the station so much and he would always request a song that his wife wanted and then eventually I was like, why do you do this all the time? And he said initially he started calling in because he messed up. 
And then when he requested a song for his wife, she felt joyful. So he just kept on doing it. And he's like, in ways, it repaired our relationship. And I feel like you could never get that from a podcast. There's something about turning on a radio and you hear what the host is going through live. And that's so intimate. And I'm your friend in your car, at the office, blah, blah, blah. Uh, But podcasting has its own form of intimacy because you get access to me whenever you want. It's not like I end at two o'clock. No, you're in bed and you're like, what I need is a good laugh or somebody being silly. Boom, I'm there with you. So I think they're very different, different ways of loving and being loved. Okay, that's very insightful. So um, I'll just say for those who don't know, Nadia hosts The Fuse uh, on Capital FM, yes, as well as Cut the Foreplay, your own podcast. Here's a tricky one. Are you Uh-oh. ready? Oh. If you had to pick uh-huh. between the fuse and cut the poor play. How dare you? <laughs> Put me in this I'm going to rip this off and just leave. <laughs> oh, the fuse and cut the four play. I, I've only been on the fuse for about two and a half years now, and I've really grown to love it and to love my co-host and my surroundings. So that's, that's really tough. But cut the four play, I literally, I did... I said to the audience, I feel like I'm not accessing myself fully. I'm going to do an episode naked. And believe it or not, they're all like, you know what? Live your best life, girl. We believe (laughs) in you. And I actually did a full episode naked. And I feel like on the fuse, perhaps I couldn't access that part of me. Um, So push comes to shove. I got to take my baby solely because I birthed it, yeah. you know? Like I knew that fu- was going to be yeah, answer, the full, the full reasons. grew it in my womb kind yeah. of situation. So Obviously, I, yeah. yeah, you started uh, Cut the Foreplay. It's fully your own. Yes. It has your whole personality, everything. I mean, the fuse may, may come and go, God forbid. Yeah. But Cut the Foreplay will always be with you. Yes. Uh, that's something I've definitely been able to see. My name is Tatiana Gishero, and it's been a pleasure.